I'm just walking down from the spot and I've just come across like a little track that comes down from the road and it leads to this gem. A spot next to the river. In summer. Oh. Not that it get very warm here anyway. Apologies about the wind noise. I'm sure there's a lot of wind noise. But yeah, I'm just gonna show you this absolute gem. <laughs> it's half tempting to go swimming, but I just know how cold it'll be. And also that's very fast flowing water. I've noticed that about a lot of the rivers in in Scotland is that they're very full and very fast flowing. So yeah, but anyway, I'll, I'll leave you guys here. Just thought I'd show you that, um, which is just, I don't know, look. <laughs> Nobody's here. Absolutely lovely kind of beachy, stony riverside bank. Um, even a bit of sand down here. So, yeah. Um, oh, I think I'll head back now. So I decided to keep going. <laughs> look in this valley. With the river just over there, there's all these super independent posh houses. Very nice to live here. Have a plot of land with the van on. <laughs> as much as I want to do it in here, this country, I also don't want to do it in this country. Another country, probably. But yeah. Lovely, though, around here. Ah, this one's a mountain lodge. So it's, it's not someone's house. I guess you can book it and stay in it. Yeah, pretty cool. Oh, that little cove for a van. So I've just remembered, uh, I went to Cabin Coffee um, yesterday, Cabin Coffee Avonmore. Uh, really nice coffees and I've met Stephen there and yeah, we had a good chat about vans and traveling and stuff. And he said most of the houses around this area are all holiday homes. That makes sense because none of them have cars. They're all just holiday homes, no one's in. So yeah, a bit of a shame really because I mean, no, one's, no one's occupying them. And he was saying that's not great for business. But yeah, if you are around the area, do check out Cabin Coffee Avonmore. Um, they're on Google Maps, you can search for them. Uh, just as long as it's near Avonmore, then you've probably got the right place. <laughs> so yeah, I highly recommend, absolutely great. They do vegan options, non-vegan options, treats and all that stuff. Uh, but yeah, we're just walking through the valley still. Just thought I'd mention that because uh, it's good to help out small business. Anyway, I'm gonna carry on. So, hello everyone, and now I'm back from the walk. Um, I, well, had lunch as well. <laughs> Been editing Lazy Sunday today, but I thought I'd make this video for you guys, seeing as a lot of people have requested it. Now, I did originally make a video on kind of putting this together. I think I filmed bits of it, but it wasn't, it was very vague because I didn't know, well, I was just trying to get it done. I was like, I had a week to get it done. Um, and also, I didn't know that much now. I didn't know how much it worked, how well it worked. I didn't have full settings. I didn't even have solar when I put this in and I made the video. So, but now I've lived with it for 11 months, so I can definitely tell you that pretty much running sweet and no, no, no issues. Um, maybe you could tweak it here and there, but I've had no issues and it's just gone along. Touch wood. But I mean, everything in here is just basic. It's not over the top. It's not Victron. It's done on a budget. I think the whole system costs two grand, uh, two and a half, I think, with the inverter. So let's start from the fact the the, the heart, the battery. Um, that is a DIY lithium. Now I'll go over it briefly for those that don't know. Um, <clears throat> here I have eight 3.2 volt cells and they're 280 amp hours each. Now I've wired them in a way where the amp hours stay the same, but you add 3.2 times eight, so you increase the voltage, and that gives you a nominal voltage of 25.6, but that's not really full. I tend to sit at about 26 volts like I am now. So overall the battery is 24 volts at 280 amp hours. Now the biggest question I always get asked when I say that is, why did you go 24 volts? Now the simple answer to that is it is just superior if you're making any kind of large system where you're talking about you know one two three or four thousand watts if you're if you're in the thousands of watts um, it's really beneficial to go 24 volt. Now the main obvious one is you can pretty much half your cable size which not only halves the amps which is therefore pretty much safer 
It also halves the weight of the cables because there's, well, not exactly half, but it reduces the weight of the cable and it also reduces the cost. So yeah, you've got many benefits there for just going 24 volt. And sometimes 24 volt can be cheaper, sometimes it can be more expensive for like the items themselves, but I think there they're generally thereabouts the same. The advantage with things like solar controllers is that they are measured in amps and uh, for those that don't know amps is not the same as watts basically watts is your true power so but because these are measured in amps 30 amps times 24 volts this will go up to 780 watts because it's a 30 amp controller if you were to use this with 12 volts you could only go up to 390 watts as opposed to the 780 so that means you use a half the size controller charge controller for your solar which therefore means again you reduce cost and size and weight which in a three and a half ton Luton was very beneficial so yeah the two controllers I have are 30 amp EPEVA, EPEVA, MPPT charge controllers they're the tracer model my dad has had various EPEVA controllers in his boat for the last 10 years I have fitted probably 15 of these in other people's vans over the last five six years and I have never, ever had a problem with them. I know you go Victor on this, Victor on that. They are the best of the best. And if you want that and if you want Bluetooth to be killing you while you sleep, then go ahead. But personally, I prefer the more... It is Chinese, but they've been tested and Bimble Solar sell them. And that's where I recommend to get them. Because if you have any issues, you've got a good customer service over there. And you're not going through like... The Amazon ones can be a bit sketchy and obviously eBay and Chinese but if you buy from Bimble it's a UK company and you might pay a few quid extra but that's why I've always bought mine and I've never had a problem. So yeah big shout out to Bimble Solar. So what powers these is 1200 watts of solar on the roof. I bought this from Bimble Solar. They currently don't sell the panels anymore. I've got two 600 watt. I think they're Canadian solar panels. Um, great panels. I've seen 1300 watts out of them in the spring before and in the autumn. But in the summer, obviously, they're hotter. They're most efficient when they're cool and optimum angle. So that's usually spring. So yeah, 1300 watts is great to see. Those panels are great. Um, and that goes, as I say, one panel into each controller, so they're completely separate. So distributing the power, I thought I'd just go on those two first because they're the main two things, as I say, about the ampage rating on the 24 volts. So you, you benefit a lot on 24 and then what the actual battery is. Um, oh! Before I forget, I know I'm not doing this very chronologically, but uh, the BMS here is a JK BMS. And I absolutely love this. Anyone who's researched into DIY lithium, I'm sure you've come across the off-grid garage in Australia by a German guy called Andy. And yeah, he's really recommended these. And the benefit over these is they have a two amp active balancer, which means they actively charge the cells, the low ones and discharge the high ones as opposed to every other balancer which just takes a bit off the top of the highest cell. So moving on we have the distribution which is a midi mega fuse box from 12 volt planet. I love these you just have one input um, via a isolation switch off the battery and then that goes through a big fuse to go to the inverter and then we have four midi fuses two of which go to each charge controller one goes to the fuse box and one goes to the B2B, which is the battery to battery charger from the engine to the leisure battery. Now this van, although it's a you know Mercedes truck and some people think it's 24 volt, it is 12 volt. So the battery charger I have to charge these batteries in the winter months like we are now in Scotland where it's 12 and a half degrees in December. Not sure how that's happening, but anyway. To charge these I use a Sterling 12 to 24 70 amp, so that pulls around 70 75 amps out of my alternator and puts about 30 amps 32 amps into my leisure battery because that's 24 volt uh, that equivalates to about 850 watts 900 watts so that is a nice amount of power to be getting uh, while i'm driving to be fair i could do with more but my van can't handle any more than that and on the negative side of distribution we just have a basic negative bus bar just to join them all together very nice and neatly saves them going down there in terms of battery monitoring, we have a 500 amp Renergy shunt. Honestly, for the price, they have put them up, they're about 70 quid, but you can still find them on offer for about 50 to 60 pounds. And I absolutely love them. Like, it, there's no Bluetooth connectivity again, no brainwashing <laughs> radioactive stuff. 
Uh, but the best thing about this is the fact that I can be stood in the kitchen and I can see how much power I'm using while I'm cooking, because I have electric cooking in here, um, while I'm cooking, or if I'm just sat on the sofa or anywhere in the van, I can if it flashes when it's charging and obviously grey winter Scottish days, we're not charging at the moment. But yeah, it's just really easy to see if I'm charging or discharging because it's solid discharging, flashing when it's charging and it says big percentage there, amp hours remaining and all your usage and voltage and time remaining. Everything just there, no buttons needing pressed, you just look at it and it's just simple. No getting your phone out and getting distracted. As I always say, simple, reliable and yeah, just functioning. You don't need all this over the top stuff. And it doesn't need to cost a million quid. As I say, I've got electric cooking in a van with nearly 1500 watts of solar for costing under two and a half grand. So I briefly mentioned about fuse box coming off the mega fuse box. Now, what it does is it goes into one 24 volt blade fuse holder, which powers all 24 volt stuff. So all my exterior lighting on the outside of the van all goes through relays which are powered by 24 volt so that they use the leisure system so I can have them on while driving or while stationary. I then tee off that fuse box and come in to a Victron Orion 24 to 12. So this converts my 24 volt battery to a consistent solid 12.0 volts. Now that's great for things like my CCTV box just here or my Wi-Fi that's just here or anything that's got a 12 volt jack on can happily take my 12 volts because it's a it doesn't go up to 13 or 14 like your conventional 12 volt leisure system would do um, so yeah it doesn't harm any devices that I plug straight into the 12 volt so things running off that are pretty much everything lights water pump diesel heater etc uh, and then the 24 volt just runs very minimal things it runs the fridge to be fair um, and charges all my devices so it does do a fair bit of job so I mentioned the inverter a couple of times, uh, I just didn't think I'd get to that quite yet, but now I'm ready. So the inverter used to be just here, but I have always envisaged a second battery bank for if I ever needed it. Uh, that way it would give me that extra prolonged, possibly like two weeks off grid without having to charge at all. And you could go all the way down to about 10, 5, 10% 10 with in, in these lithium batteries, absolutely fine. Uh, but at the moment that only lasts about five, six days if I were to properly drain it, but I like keep it topped up I don't like to drain it uh, just so I've got a reserve but yeah the inverter is a three and a half thousand watt flames of inverter it's nothing special it was just used off eBay it's just a Chinese special not even bought new because I couldn't afford them they're like two three hundred quid and this one was 180 quid delivered then the last thing that we've kind of got in terms of the electrics is these which are the lights as I previously mentioned and we have like the left side right side front, back, and then flashy strobes. And yeah, they're all my lights. Uh, no need for them, but they're really useful for work lights in the winter when it gets dark at three o'clock, or parking up when it gets dark at three o'clock. Um, yeah, just generally useful, or to scare people if they're walking around your van at night. So yeah, I think that's everything here that I've mentioned now. And for those further interested in the DIY lithium, I'm just gonna go into a couple of settings I've got. So I start balancing these batteries at 3.45 volts or above. Now the reason I've set that is so that it doesn't balance it when it's still in the flat area of the curve. I'll put a graph up now um, with lithium versus lead acid. Lead acid you can read the rough percentage from the voltage because it goes up in a straight line. However lithium goes right up at the bottom, stays flat from about 20 to 80-ish percent, 85 to 90, and then as it gets towards 100% it starts to peak again. So you, in that middle range it's not very accurate at determining the voltage. So you don't really want it balancing in that range, but when it starts to go out, which is about 3.45 volts as it's starting to leave that curve, it then starts balancing. That means that if there's any, if they're really close and your BMS is trying to work really hard to work out which ones are high and low, that's not great because they're not distinguished yet, whereas when they start going up, that's better. So I just balance about 3.45 volts. I also only charge to 27.6 battery voltage, which is also 3.45 volts per cell. So that's, that's only basically balancing when they're at the top, which might sound silly, but 
it means that they're only balancing when they're exceeding where they should be charged to, which is pretty much what you want. But that's only because mine's an active balancer, not a passive balancer. You'll have to look into the differences. As I say, I highly recommend Andy from the Off Grid Garage. He's got tons of videos on it. Don't take my advice for it. I don't know that much. He isn't, was an electrician. And then I float at 3.375 volts per cell, which is 27 volts exactly. Now, to put them at 12 volt, that is 13.8 and 13.5. So it's not, it's not very high on charging these batteries, but that's because that takes it to about 98 or 99 percent. So you're only losing about one or two percent, which in my case is about three to five amp hours. It's not very much at all, and you're really not going to miss that much. But by not charging as high, you're going to preserve the life of your batteries considerably by not pushing them quite as high. And I've only ever taken mine down to 25%, so again, by not taking it fully down either. Basically, these batteries should last probably between 10 to 15 years, at least I'd expect to get that out of them. If not, you know, more. But we'll see how it goes. So far, I've not had any problems. As I said at the beginning, maybe you could do with a few tweaks. Those might be add a wind turbine for extra power during winter. Um, I want to add a side solar panel on the side of the van to get some extra power in winter when you can't be asked to tilt your panels. I'm thinking about tilting my panels with actuators so I can do it more frequently and more spontaneously. Uh, I've got no problems with doing it by hand. It's just if you need to put them up for one hour, it's kind of... <laughs> Uh, a bit of a faff or if it's really windy uh, it's not very fun to pull up so possibly maybe looking into that in the new year maybe looking into wind turbine this winter if, especially if I'm going west coast it's supposed to be really windy I could get tons of power off wind but anyway that's it for this video if you have any questions on any of my electrics um, anything I missed out I don't think I did because I could see it all here anything at all just let me know in the comments and I'll get back if I have to make a follow-up video I will uh, any general questions put them in maybe I'll do a QA and a if there's enough of them and yeah if you did like the video please do make sure you hit that like button drop a comment down below as I say let me know what you think about the video and if you're not subscribed I'd really appreciate that and I'll see you in the next video